Hello, and welcome to another episode of Season 3 of Legal Wellbeing in Action. Today's episode is another installment of this year's theme, Wellbeing, A Deeper Dive, and it's called Getting Down to the Heart of the Matter 2.0. Today, we again speak with Elizabeth Lynch Phillips, a lawyer and certified professional coach who works with lawyers to find greater meaning and satisfaction in their lives. Elizabeth will take us even deeper into the concept of a holistic approach to the practice of law with an emphasis on focusing within, being present in the moment, and drawing on our true selves in everything we do in the practice of law and beyond. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Great. Thanks again for joining us, Elizabeth. I'm really excited to have you back and uh, to speak with us again about you know, the concept of, of practicing and, and focusing uh, within being present in the moment and, and really drawing on our true selves. But, you know, last time the conversation was really at a, um, a high level in sort of that intellect and um, the concepts. I'm hoping that today we can spend some time talking about really tangible ways um, to put some of this into practice. And so, you know, what do, what do we do when, when we talk about trying to draw on our true selves? Um, that, that's, that's great in theory, but how does that show up in our lives? What do we actually do? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a little short question. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got I'll start a with a, answer. We're starting with a softball, an easy one. Yeah, yeah right. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a funky question. Like, how do we know our true selves? It feels kind of trite. I think it can, you know, and really, but there are actual ways to, the way I look at it is turn your attention inward. And, and, and it doesn't, and it really is, is a learning process. And so, um, I think I probably mentioned this last time and it's why I'm so intrigued by this deeper dive theme that the bar is doing this year that, um, so I'm a coach and I coach a lot of lawyers and when they come to me with a problem, it's always about a, a situation or a circumstance or, a I don't know whether to leave my job and here's the yeses and the nos, or I don't, I'm having a problem with this colleague or whatever it is. Um, I, I never, the way I operate and what I find so much more impactful is not about, okay, let's, or, or I want to meet a goal. Like we don't go, okay, how are you going to meet your goal? Let's get you out there where you want to be. And what we do instead is, is turn attention toward their more inner world. Right. So, um, and there are lots of ways to do that. And that's why like, that's beautiful in theory, but it's kind of like, well, what do I do? <laughs> and, and there's, a number of things. Um, for instance, um, and this comes up all the time. It came up for me. It comes up in life all the time, mostly because there's other people around. Um, you know, we can be as calm and centered as we want until we have a conversation with someone and something gets, we get hooked uh, or triggered. Right. And, right. And so it, it, it's that old, not to interrupt you. It's that old, um, I have a friend who, uh, and he's a friend of yours as well, who often says, you know, the, the plans are always in place until the enemy fires the first shot, right? right. And then it, then, then it's chaos all around. And right. well, I'm going to go back to my old ways of doing things. And um, they tend to be sort of topical. And uh, I'm going to control the situation. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that dive down deep. And, and also when you were talking, it reminded me of what I think maybe we said the last time, but you know, wherever you go, there you are. So yeah. somebody coming and saying, I know I'll fix this by just changing my job. That's, you're not really getting to the core. Yeah, no, no. And that's, that was a big learning for me too. Cause when I was a lawyer and I, and I switched to being a coach, I was like, oh, this is going to solve everything. And I actually do, I mean, I love this work. I love it and I wouldn't right. change it, but I brought all my, the things that bothered me when I was a lawyer and my struggles and my insecurities, I just brought it right over to coaching. <laughs> so, right. so it really, it wasn't so much that the coach, that changing jobs has made everything so much more um, uh, enjoyable for me and my life feels more expansive and all those things. It's more the work Right. I've done sort of 
learned about through coaching, but then done it from done my own work. So, right. um, so and I, I interrupted examples, you and yeah, derailed right? you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so tell us more about the resources, the deeper piece. Yeah. Well, so for instance, when we, this is such a normal thing. If we have an, an interaction with someone and we don't like it, they said something that made us mad or a situation at work where the, your soup, your boss is always doing this or that. Typically what we do is our attention goes out to them. What's wrong with them? We, and it's also, you know, and what, geez, they're such jerks or they're this. And often it, the natural move is to find other people to agree with you. Like, can you, believe, and it feels good to feel heard perhaps to, uh, you know, on one level to have people go, oh my God, they really are. That's horrible. But they're, they, yes, they're the, they're jerks. And can you believe that? And to, so you get kind of people on your side and that there's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't get you very far. Right. And so I, I think a more impactful question is to, again, it's just like taking your attention and instead of putting it over there on them or that situation, you turn it around and you get curious about, wow, what is it about this that's bothering me so much? Right, right. Why is that such a trigger for me? Yeah, what what's going on in me? And that can sound like, and as lawyer, I'll get to this in a minute, but as lawyers, you know, we're big thinkers. We think and we try to figure it out and that's our job. And it's also our culture focuses on, you know, I need to figure this out. So even that it's better than doing nothing, but to stick with just the analytical, like, oh, I guess that bothered me because um, even if you can get as far as, oh, when I was little, that, that bully did that to me. I think that's, I mean, that's huge if you can even get there, but that even that's kind of an intellectual aha, which is good. And there's always more, which is, um, what am I actually feeling right now? Right. Am I hurt? And especially when someone's uh, made us mad. The last thing we want to admit is that we're hurt. Because <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. Vulnerable. But in the meantime, if we're not getting um, honest with ourselves about that, we're sort of living this kind of split off existence, right? Like we're hurt, but we're not going to tell ourselves, admit it to ourselves. We're certainly not telling anybody else. We're not going to actually let ourselves feel whatever hurt feels like. So um, it's kind of like an, an invitation to be with what's actually happening. Yeah. And, and, and that's critical. And there's a phrase you use, which I want to hear in a minute, because uh, it, it was one that you and I have talked about. And it, it really sort of opened my eyes to the idea of, of sort of being with those feelings in a, in an honest way, honest with yourself, because I think, I think all of us, myself included, right? So I, I'll, yeah, I can turn inward. And then one of two things happens. Either I'm just extremely self-critical yes. or I'm self-critical at a topical level because I want to circle back to what you said earlier, right? Which is I'll be really self-critical and I'll voice that to other people around me so they can tell me it's okay and make me feel better. Because <laughs> what I'm trying to do is push away from honestly sitting with those feelings. And, oh, and I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this phrase, but, but you've used it before and you say it better than I do. It, it has to do with sort of uh, gentle, compassionate affection um, towards those feelings. So you, you're sitting with something that's really uncomfortable, but you're actually giving attention to it. And you're doing it in a way that isn't self-critical and that isn't just trying to shine it on so somebody else makes you feel good. It's it's actually sitting with it. Yeah. And and frankly, the, the more, the bigger, the probably the biggest barrier to that is before you even get to that is if you sort of take a peek inside often feelings that trigger us don't feel very good we don't like them so we just even if we go as far as going hmm what do i feel right now it kind of is like ugh i'm going to go clean the kitchen right or watch netflix or work really hard or <laughs> cuz it's it's a it's a tricky invitation cuz right. before you know we're wired to avoid pain um, right. But I think ultimately that constant avoiding what's really going on internally is, is it ends up, we end up feeling very disconnected right? Um, and disembodied and sort of living on the surface. Um, yeah. And, and there's something really powerful about going, okay, right now, here's what's actually happening. I'm actually really hurt. 
that's huge to be able to say that, to name that. There's a, there's a neurological studies where people are hooked up to, you know, electrodes and brain scans. And just by naming what you're actually feeling, it actually calms your nervous system down. Right. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, um, I feel betrayed. That's what right. this is. And I'm hurt by something seemingly innocent that, I mean, not innocent, but just looking at the surface of what happened at work or home. Right. It takes, it takes a minute <laughs> and, and a little pause to go, oh, that's what, that's actually why I just don't feel right. Or I feel angry or irritable. It's right. It's really hurt my feelings. I mean, yeah, I think an example, cause it's, we t often we get a little more defensive and well, they did it or not, but yeah. So it feels vulnerable to admit even to yourself, like, oh, my, I'm hurt. I, I think I've heard you refer to it as um, gentle, warm, affectionate attention. Yes. A and I love that phrase because I, it took me a while to get to it because I knew I'd butcher it if I didn't keep puzzling did you practice? it out. <laughs> no, I did not practice. A and, and definitely I intellectualized it, obviously. But, um, but I think that's such a powerful way to think about sort of taking that internal look, right? Spinning back on yourself and looking at what's really going on. And for me, that key is that gentleness, that warm affection towards yourself, because it's recognizing those feelings are real. It's okay to have those feelings. I, I really don't need to rush through them. And in fact, I'm going to be better off in the long run if I don't rush through them because and we've talked about this. When I open myself up to some of the pain and the anger and the feelings that, as you phrased them, just don't feel that good, it also means I'm opening up the ability to access those feelings that are really great. Because I, yeah. I think you can't shut one down without shutting the other side down. Yeah, we try to curate, um, like, I would only like to feel joy and happiness and excitement, but no thank you to uh, right. jealousy or <laughs> despair or, you know, I mean, the, and it's just, it doesn't work that way. Um, right. So, so if, yeah. if I want to do that, if I want to, if I, I mean, again, if I want to think about how do I turn internally, do that gentle, warm, affectionate attention, are there, are, I mean, should I be, are there resources? Do I, should I think about using a coach? Do I, are there things I can read? Are there things I can listen to? Yeah, all sorts of things. I'll, I'll, um, there's a, let me list some resources after. I'd love to do just, and I'll do it in a minute, but if it's okay, just like a five minute presencing exercise. And, and that might, it might be more tangible. Like, what do you mean affectionate attention? Like, it's, I, I think that'd be great. And maybe now's the time to do that because we're talking about. Well, uh, um, let me do another, like a bit of a, another layer of yeah. why behind this. Absolutely. Um, Just kind of a little soapbox. Just going to hop up on it for a second. Yeah. Um, in the, in the sort of learning that I've been pursuing, um, they're coach based. A lot of them are sort of, they start that way. Um, they're all kind of draw on these more ancient wisdom traditions, not like not a religion, but things that have been around for thousands of years, all of which in my, um, what I've recognized is at their core, they're all basically saying the same thing. <laughs> Um, um, so in, in that sort of vein, what I've really, what's been pointed out to me, and it's really an eye opener is, is, and this is especially true for lawyers, how much we live 100% in our strategic minds. Right. Right. And this quote has been attributed to Einstein. I have not researched it. Lots of things have been attributed to him. He said some wise things, but it's this idea that the strategic mind is a great servant and our more creative, um, some people would say right brain, but like our more creative minds are a great master, but we've created this society in which the servant has become the master. We're completely run by our brains, our thinking, right. A lot of which is not very productive and it's not even intentional. It just happens. And I'll, I'll sort of point to this in this little practice I'll do in a second. Um, and we don't even, so we've completely lost access to these other really amazing centers of knowing that we have as humans. They've just been um, discounted, 
right? And that's namely our bodies. We're mostly walking around disembodied, not really knowing what's happening physically, unless something hurts, then, then we know. Um, or in our hearts. And, you know, it's, again, this might send a little, people say like, oh, you should come from your heart. Well, what I realized about me and I find about most people is we don't even know what that means. Right. Like, what does that mean to come from your heart? Like, that's lovely, but what? Right. <laughs> and it just becomes an into, an idea that we can't quite figure out. So we move on. Right. So, um, and what I am learning more and more is that being able to just kind of at least bring your body online a little bit, know what you're feeling, be, know what that means to actually feel it, not think it. Like you and I, you could say, well, how are you? I could say, well, even, you know, on a good day, well, I'm, I'm really angry because da, 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 da. Well, that's talking about, right. That's, that's me explaining how I feel. That's not actually feeling. <laughs> um, right. It's intellectualizing it. Right, it's an, exactly. And because that's what we do. And especially like you don't get grades in any school, grade school, college, certainly not law school for being um, emotionally intelligent or present right? or wise. You right. get grades for how much can, does, can your brain remember about what you were supposed to learn? Right. What can you figure out? And I put that in uh, air quotes. Yeah. So this, that's what I like about this. Um, presencing sort of exercise is right. not only do you bring these things online so you can actually access uh, intuition and I would say wisdom, but it kind of brings a part of you online that is, it might sound a little funky, but it's, it's almost like you have more access in my experience, access to intelligence you didn't know you had. Right. Um, I, things come out of your mouth that surprise you in a good way, <laughs> right? you know, if you can get grounded. And so I'll, let's just do the little, we'll do like five minutes, just a little exercise. And, um, ideally, especially if it's new, it's better to do it with your eyes closed. Um, there's also, as you practice, there's also a way you can do it with your eyes open because it's really, because you don't need to be in a quiet place by yourself with the door closed to, to use this practice, but it's a great way to start. Right. The visual field is, is very compelling. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. So if you yeah, can, let's do it. Where you can do it. Yeah. yeah. You well, are. Don't do it. If you're driving. <laughs> Not, no, I will say that I use this practice while I'm driving. Well, I mean, it, don't close your eyes if you're it. driving. <laughs> yes. I don't close my eyes and I can also practice putting my attention on the road and other drivers. Right. right. Um, and also be aware that I'm sitting in a chair. Yeah. And that my feet are touching the ground and I can feel right. my feet. Like that's, so that's what I'm calling presence. Right. Yeah. So right. let's just try it instead of talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think minutes. it's a good, okay. I think it's a good idea. All right. So if you're in a place where you can close your eyes, great. If you're not and you still want to try this, just keep your eyes on the world around you. Stay safe. And even doing that, you can. Just start by taking a few intentionally slower, deeper breaths. And on the exhale, just for the next few breaths, just intentionally slow down the exhale. Because we often shortchange ourselves when we're going about our busy days. We don't really breathe out all the way. And you can just let yourself know that for these next few minutes, there's no problem to solve. There's nothing to figure out. Nothing to achieve or accomplish. Nowhere to go. So the mind can relax. And so I'm just inviting you to take your attention and let it drop down from the front of your forehead, which is where our attention usually hangs out. And just let it drop all the way down 
just to focus on what it feels like to breathe. It's a first step. Just notice what does it actually feel like when you take a breath in? What happens? And what happens when you breathe out? What sensations do you notice? We're not thinking about the process. We're actually feeling it kind of from within. Like notice if your belly or your chest rises or falls. You might feel air coming in and out of your mouth or nose. Maybe notice your heartbeat. So this is just bringing elements of your actual experience right now into your awareness. We breathe all the time. Our heart is beating all the time. We just don't typically notice it. As we're doing this, you might notice other more subtle sensations are kind of becoming apparent. I notice places in your body that are, feel like there might be some subtle movement, some sort of vibration, or almost like you can feel your blood pulsing. Or maybe take your attention down to your seat in the chair, wherever you're sitting. And just notice the sensation of the contact with the chair. And maybe just notice the felt sense of actually being held. So by the chair, by gravity, Just bring your legs online. Your, just take your attention and notice whatever sensations are there in your upper legs, your knees, your calves, your feet. And actually feel your feet. And often, if you wiggle your toes a little bit, that can help get your attention, actually get your attention in there. This isn't about visualizing your feet. So you've just got this heightened awareness. You've brought online a little bit more the whole lower half of your body. So this is kind of your base. It can feel a little bit like you've landed. It's right here in this moment. Nothing to change about your experience. Notice if your mind wants to get in there and think about things. That's fine. That's what minds do. And you can just make the choice to keep your attention on the physical sensations. And again, nothing to change about your experience. You're just noticing. Now we can just take your attention to your emotional world. So that can often, emotions will be some sort of sensation inside the body, often in your chest or your belly or your throat. And just notice if you are aware of any particular mood. And there's no emotion or mood that's better than any other. If you notice you feel irritated, great, just notice that. We're just giving it absolute unconditional permission to be just like it is. It may feel blank or numb. And if that's the case, just notice that. 
There's nowhere to get that's different than where you are. So this whole checking in, there's no agenda. Nothing to fix or change. The only agenda is to get more intimate with your actual experience right now. And then we'll just take your attention and kind of direct it toward your mind. So you might notice if your mind is busy or calm, open, shut. And maybe notice the kind of thoughts that are going by, usually unspoken, narrative, judgments, memories. And notice how you can choose to do this. You can choose to pay attention to your mind, just like you chose to pay attention to your seat in the chair. That you have agency over where you put your attention. And now just for a moment, we'll, I'll invite you to notice that what these things have in common, these physical sensations, the emotional movements, thought processes, what they all have in common is that they are always changing constantly, rising and falling. And the other thing they have in common is that you're able to notice them. There's a part of you, an aspect of you kind of in the background. It's kind of behind or underneath the physical sensations, the emotions, the thoughts. We can just call this presence or being or spaciousness. And it doesn't have an opinion about you or your physical sensations or your emotions or your thoughts. It's like the space in which those arise and fall. And you, let's just turn our attention toward that just for a moment. It's nothing to think about. Great. So I'll invite you, if your eyes are closed, to just prepare to open them. And when you open them, maybe just open them slightly and start to take in visual field. And as you do that, see if you can keep some of your attention on your seat in the chair so you still know that you're sitting. You still know that your feet are on the floor. You can feel your heartbeat. And so my invitation, Bill, to you, because we're right here together, is right. as we talk, to try to keep a portion of your attention on your inner world and a portion of your attention on our conversation. So that can feel like, for me and for people in my experience, that you're a little more landed. Right? Yeah, so. And for me, because I've, I've, I've done this uh, a little bit longer guided meditation um, that you that you offer um, a couple things that I think have always been important. So trying to stay in that moment, I think that's that's important and it's key. And it always some of this is going to be intellectualizing it, which is not what I'm intending to do. But I think we sometimes get in our notion that either we need to be doing, and that's different than being, and maybe it is, but the two certainly can coexist. It's not an either or. 
Right. Lawyers, right. lawyers tend to live in that doing world. That's how they get rewarded. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's okay to be doing. That's that's what clients are looking for. That's what we might be looking for. But it's also okay, and in fact, maybe more than okay. It's important to to be to just be. And the other thing I always think about is I know when I first started um, doing practices like this, I, I would I would my thoughts would sometimes grab a hold of me like, well, oh, clearly shoot, yeah. you don't yeah. know what you're doing. So, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And I, I, I would describe it almost like every now and then I sort of catch the lightning in the bottle and it's like, ah, oh, that's what this is. And it gets easier and more connected, I think, the more you do it and the more you take advantage of the, the practice. And so I use it a lot. I Like you, Elizabeth, there's times when, even if it's just three or four minutes, when I'll just stop, sort of drop inside um, and and try to remind myself about being and feeling and being in that moment and yeah it's really the question is what's here right now right right now right. what's my experience right now and there's no way it should be or shouldn't be you're just like oh okay notice right. I'm a little, you know i'm anxious or whatever's there and like my legs tingling there's nothing to figure out it's just right, it's, right. It, you know you brought up doing and being and i pe People's, I mean, even if that's intriguing to people, often they go, okay, well, how do I be? What do I do to right. be? <laughs> because I'm still like, like, does it have to be at in the Bahamas? Do I have to be um, relaxing in a, you know, a lawn chair? And that's great. But, you know, frankly, we can be at the Bahamas or relaxing in an armchair and we are thinking and thinking and planning and remembering and going, think, you know, our, the cell, the, our brain is quite busy. Right. That's not being so. And to simplify being like what we just did, just, just go do the more we can do what we're doing already, that do your work, write your brief, answer the phone calls, look at your emails from a place where you actually are still aware that you're sitting, right. that you're breathing that you also are thinking. And sometimes those thoughts will be, you know, thoughts are, thoughts are like digestion. They just happen. Most right. of the thoughts we think the vast majority aren't because we have, we have a problem to solve and we have called on this amazing tool that is our mind to solve them. Right. It, it's like a uh, random thoughts and they, there's trains of thoughts. And next thing you know, you're thinking about something that has nothing to, so that's this kind of, um, uh, just spontaneous, like random thinking that happens to everybody. It's not that you can't stop it, but you can also decide, okay, I notice I'm having random thoughts. I notice I'm sitting in a chair. I notice that I'm breathing. The more we can just check in and get back there for a second, the quality of our doing changes. Right. We're not as reactive. We, and frankly, I mean, neurologically, we're more creative because the whole like doing, 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 it, it's usually our shoulders are up, we're stressed. And that that's almost like a fight or flight, uh, you know, a, a danger signal to our brains. And when we're in that mode, which we pretty much live in, the, cre the part of our brain that is, that is creative is offline. Right. Because we don't need it if we're in danger. We don't need to be you know, create great new ideas when we're, um, if there's a tiger, <laughs> right. You just need to figure out, do I stand? Right. Do I run? What like, we, we got to be safe. Yeah. So yeah. that's normal. And we pretty much live in that state all the time. That gets into the whole stress level, but this doing and being the one teacher I had really described it beautifully that you're it's, they're not two things, right? You can do whatever you're doing from a place of being more present. Right. You are aware that you have a body. You're aware of what it feels like that and that you have an emotion of some sort, whatever it is. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to figure it out. Right. Or do anything about it right now. It's just is. Right now I this is. Yeah, and I I when you know early on the last time and even in the introduction today we talked about a holistic approach and i think that's what it is i think a lot of times we because we're thinkers especially as lawyers we get in this notion of okay here's the little compartments 
well, I'm doing right now, so I'll be later. I don't have time to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if I'm being right now, well, then I'm shutting all the doing down. No, you, the two are compatible. You can, you can do while being and you can yes. be while doing. Yeah. And, you know, you touched on another point that I think is really critical, which is you, you phrased it as bringing everything online and being creative. And it's funny because I think lawyers don't often think of lawyering as a creative endeavor the best lawyers are the creative lawyers because problems come up for you, for your clients, things that you have to solve. And we often think we're going to drop into our analytical world to solve them well and fine to use your analytics. But the more creative you are, the more online you've brought everything, the better lawyer you can be because you're really solving it from that place internally that really resonates with you. It makes yes. you more creative. It, I, I think it makes you a better lawyer. So and what I agree. And what it, what it is, and this is a weird concept for lawyers, I'm finding it's kind of triggering, is you are more available for creative ideas to bubble up or download or whichever way you look at it instead of, okay, now I need to be more creative because that's <laughs> talk about right. shutting down creativity, right? Is to try to do it. Right, it's, right. It's, try to force really it. Being present and having just a little bit of that part of you open online a little that is aware of, okay, I'm sitting in a chair, I feel this, I notice my mind. That's the part that can be available right? versus us going to try to do it or figure it out or nail it down, grab it. Right. right? It's a whole different, it's, a, it's being on the receptive. And that is like a bizarre concept <laughs> for most of us, but especially because yeah. we want to, we think we have to do it all, control it all ourselves, right? Right. And, and I think I think part of what goes with that, the other way I've thought about it, and admittedly, it's more intellectualizing it, but I also think about it in terms of, well, there's intelligence and, you know, lawyers by and large are intelligent people. They work from that place in their head where they think about intelligence as an analytic skill. But then there's also wisdom, right? And wisdom yes. feels to me more like that holistic approach to things, that notion of I'm drawing on my brain, but I'm drawing on myself on who i am on my heart on all my of those intuition, things my intuition exactly. my being aware of what's what's going on around me at the same time like yeah. being more open to a broader field of i would say reality but like what's here right now right and, that's and, why and, that's where ideas that are like oh my god i didn't how, where did that come from exactly <laughs> right? It's not that you drill down to try to think of a creative solution so often. It's more being available. Right. And on the and receptive. I, and we don't do that by thinking harder. Yeah. And I'm convinced, I'm convinced clients are happy to have an intelligent lawyer, but clients are really lucky and happy if they have a wise lawyer, a yeah. lawyer who can tap into all of those and, and really bring all that to the representation. Right. And I, and I think that same thing, wisdom, boy, does it impact our personal lives too? Yeah, Absolutely. Right. And, and navigating this really very challenging world. Right. So it's not just about being a good lawyer. I don't think it's a different. It's about being a good. Live. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's some, I have that, a meditation like that. I have like a two minute one and then a 15 minute or 10 or 15 minute one recorded. I'm happy to send that to people if they want. I, I personally, especially if I'm pretty, um, busy and decide and go decide to go sit you know in my closet that's where i meditate or you know do the stillness practice meditating this is very like ugh, that word right. gives people hives but it's just just sitting it's a being still for a minute right this this i heard a quote the other day that this um mathematician french mathematician pascal pascal's like triangle my son knew who he was but um i said i told my son who's very uh computer guy it was like yeah he had this quote that that the biggest problem that humanity faces is the inability to sit in a room and do nothing for 15 minutes right <laughs> and my son said well yeah but most math mathematicians are nuts so <laughs> like, okay. he's, he's trying to avoid sitting still too that's his way of doing it but um and a lot of times i get from clients like pushback like i don't have time to do that i don't have 15 spare minutes a day Right. I'm too busy. There's too much to get done. Right. And it's a really paradoxical uh, reality that the 
if you can, if for a little while, just be willing to give up the 15 minutes. It, it does start to, you can, you, there are a way I'll mention in a minute, a couple of ways to bring this into your day. Right. It's easier to learn it when you're not in the middle of a bunch of stuff, but you actually end up getting more done. Right. Because you're not just playing whack-a-mole. You're not right. just reacting to every little thing that comes up. <laughs> Emails. It's, right. it, it's like you're approaching it from a more, from a place where you're landed. Right. And yeah. your, your, your prioritization works a little better. Like it, you actually do feel like, wow, I got more done today by investing that 15 minutes at the beginning of the day. And during the day, during, while you're living, there are great tools to like your cell phone is a tyrant usually, right? And so distracting. But if you can just make it a practice to whenever it dings, or when you see a new email, rather than what we usually do, which is answer it, respond, look at the text, answer it. We, we have this kind of knee-jerk doing reaction. Take five seconds, three seconds, and go. You put right. your, take your breath, put your attention on your seat in the chair, your feet on the floor. Notice that you're breathing. Yeah. Now answer the phone call. They're not going to know. Right. Like they'll wait, they'll wait five seconds. And right. from, frankly, I've really got, I've seen so much more impact when I do things like, for instance, this podcast, or I have to give a talk or CLE or, or, and always before a client appointment, <clears throat> whereas I used to like go over my notes again and try to make sure I memorized everything. I don't do that now. I spend, I mean, I've already, I've prepared, I've looked at a couple notes or you know, it's not that you don't prepare, but before the thing, the hearing, the conference with the judge, the meeting with the client, get get present for two or three minutes and see how that impacts what you do. Yeah. Like how much more valuable that is than going over your notes one last time and trying to capture and remember. And that, that I mean, that's, that creates stress for me anyway, but so that, I mean, just that using your phone as a tool for good, <laughs> like right. it's a reminder, it's a reminder. And, and also just to peek back at what you said about when you try to do this kind of practice and thoughts come in, like, yes, absolutely. They'll come in. But every time you go, oh, I notice I'm lost in thought. I'm going to choose to put my attention back on my seat in the chair or my right. breathing. Like that's a win. So if you get lost in thought 30 times in 15 minutes, that's 30 high fives for you because right. usually we're lost in thought and we just stay there from the right. time we, we get up to the time we, we go to bed, right? Yeah, <laughs> we never come back internally. And we also <laughs> believe everything we think. Yeah, 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 absolutely. They're just thoughts. Like that's such a, such a huge deal breaker when you can go, oh, yeah, I noticed I'm thinking. Right. And not, not investing, becoming identified with every silly thought that goes through your head. Right. Because they are all over the place for all of us, right? So yeah. um, so we've only got a couple minutes left. And and so what, I, what I'm hoping, so first off, you mentioned you'd be willing to send this to people. Is there, should they email you? Should they email me? If somebody you. wants, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm happy to let them email you. What's the best okay. email address? It's uh, ELP for Elizabeth Lynch Phillips at lawyersevolving.com. ELP at lawyersevolving.com. Great. Yes. Um, you, so the, the, the there's, meditation. There's a couple of books that I will. Like, yeah, and that's what I, I was love. just going to say. Yeah. So the, the practice you just did, great tool, um, which we cell can phone, get by emailing cell you. Cell phone reminder. You talked about the cell phone reminder. What other sort of tangible tools can we share that that they can take away from today i think a, a book i mean i'm an eckhart tolle fan um i discovered him about 10 years ago i didn't know who he was till someone suggested him he's he's a teacher who's just talks about kind of the he was a huge eye-opener for me to just look at the world like change my lens on the world and see it differently. He was the one who started getting me realizing, oh, you mean just because I think it doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> so right. it's a pretty easy read. He wrote a good book. Um, it's one of his more recent ones called A New Earth. And it's and it really talks about not just how to make your life easier by some of these practices, but 
um, how much of an impact that can have on our world if we start to show up um, this and way it, a little more. And it's Eckhart Tolle, it's E-C-K-H-A-R-T, and the last name is T-O-L-L-E. -L -L -E. For, yeah. And A New Earth is a, is a good book to listen to. Great. And in terms of um, what I talked about, kind of practices to bring actually bring your heart online a little more, and also to notice when our hearts are protected, because they often are. They're tender, right? So we keep them pretty closed without even really realizing it. Um, and it's a to protect ourselves. It's understandable. It's nothing we need to like wrench open, but boy, it's helpful to just notice it. Um, there's an author and teacher called John Prendergast, and he wrote a book called um, The Deep Heart. Deep, H-E-A-R-T. Right. That's got some great practices in it to sort of just bring your heart back online. And another book that also he recorded, that's on Audible, and I listen to it because I think he's a very, very present person and that actually impacts how I hear right. it. Um, and then he wrote a book called In Touch, which is more about learning to actually tune into your physical body and and gain wisdom from there and insight and intuition. And right. um, That's not recorded to my knowledge, but that, so you have to buy the book. Um, right. But yeah, so that's, that's just some quickies. Um, those are great. And, and I guess the, the one thing that always occurs to me is not, not just gentle affection when you're feeling something. I, I think lawyers are very good at self-recrimination. Oh um, my gosh. Yes. And, and so just being gentle with yourself, period, I, I think is such an impactful, yes. it's, it's impactful, we, I think. We think that, that if we're hard on ourselves, we'll fix, we'll fix ourselves. Um, but if you're really struggling, what a huge impact to just go, man, I am really struggling right now and treat yeah. yourself the way you would a dear friend or a loved one or a child who's really struggling. Yeah. yeah. It, do it doesn't help and it causes more problems to be hard on ourselves and just to notice when we're doing it, go, wow, I am really an asshole <laughs> to me. <laughs> that's, that's huge to just make the choice to go, all right, what if I just. Right was compassionate with myself and do, yeah, this is really hard. Yeah. And there's, I'll throw one last one. And there's a researcher named Kristen Neff, um, N-E-F-F -F, as in okay. brain. And she is a neurologist, a PhD researches compassion, self-compassion mainly. And um, that the impact on ourselves when we are critical to ourselves, the, the actually physical and neurological impact is exactly the same as if someone else was talking to yeah. us that way yeah. Yeah. and it shuts down so many like helpful parts of us that we want like the creative part of the brain and um and also remembering that we're struggling and we're suffering that's com and other people are too right but often we feel like we're the only ones or something's wrong or everyone else seems fine i'm the only one going through this right. but we can remind ourselves so if you can look her up she's got some great she got a ted talk and so oh, good. Is, it's just like, remind yourself, like, I'm not alone. There are other no, people going through. We're, we're all dragging similar. stuff around. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I hope well, there are some more tangible things in here. Um, and I'm I always happy to great. talk to anybody if they have any questions or want more resources. I Great. This is why I get up well, in the morning. So. It's always lovely to talk with you, Elizabeth. You and too, it's always though. helpful. And uh And so... Thank you all for listening. And um, if you want to learn more, by all means, reach out to me, reach out to Elizabeth. I'm always happy to put you in touch with resources um, because this is important stuff and, and taking care of yourself, really yeah. important. Makes you a better person, makes you a better lawyer, all of that. And thanks to the bar for doing this. I mean, it really does show care for lawyers as humans, right? Yeah. It's not just be a better lawyer. It's be- No, no, it's be a better, be a better be a person. Human. and 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 be a healthier person. Right? Healthier and, and yeah. And happier. Yeah. Find that joy. All right. All right. I think that's it for today. Thanks, Bill. All right. Thank you for listening. This episode was produced by the State Bar of New Mexico's Wellbeing Committee and the New Mexico Judges and Lawyers Assistance Program. All editing and sound mixing was done by Blue Sky Eva. Intro music is by Gil Flores. The views of the presenters are that of their own and are not endorsed by the State Bar of New Mexico. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, or legal advice. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider 
with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition.